I am coming to you on this. What yeah. does it mean for the Cowboys that Witten uh -oh. came out of retirement and he's back in action with them? Well, first of all, let me be very, very clear. Yesterday, when the news first came out on my radio show, because um, I was on the air uh, live when the, when the news came down, I was like, oh, no, because to me, it elevates the Dallas Cowboys. Now, somebody, will, some folks would look at me and say, you're absolutely drunk. The last time we saw Jason Witten <laughs> in 2017, he ranked 39th among 95, 39th uh, out of 94 tight ends in pro football. That was, his, that was his ranking because of how inefficient he was. His yards per catch were under 10 yards, okay? You obviously knew he wasn't getting any yards after the catch because he moved slower than a snail with arthritis, and snails can't get arthritis. That's how bad, uh, in terms of s speed, that's how bad Jason Witten is. But the reason why... I think it's a plus for the Dallas Cowboys, despite those deficiencies. It's number one. Who do you have here? You got Blake Jarwin. Listen, his last game of the regular season against the New York Giants, when he had 119 receiving yards, I mean, that was a good deal. But he only finished with 500-plus yards receiving on the year. He wasn't, he wasn't that great. And when you look at him, what are we talking about here? 27 receptions overall for the season, 35 targets. You look at him, Rico Gathers, Jeff Swain. I mean, when you look at their tight end spot, they just weren't very impressive, weren't very productive, ranked in like the 20s, like 20 or 21 or what have you. So I think with Jason Witten's presence alone will be an upgrade. I think his blocking will assist their running game. I think in short yardage situations, you'll see their ability to move the chains, particularly when you consider the fact that Dak Prescott ranks third in terms of hitting targets from the tight end spot, 73% or, or a little over 73%. I think the number, the two guys that did it better than him was like a uh, Matt Ryan, and I forgot who was number two on the list, but Dak Prescott was number three. So it helps him to have a tight end guy in short yardage situations to assist yep. in moving the chains. Yep. I don't think you'll see Jason Witten put up big numbers, but I do think you'll see him be productive in those clutch situations, which will help Dak and help Zeke. And that is what I was alluding to. And I think this is really all about leadership. I, don't, I mean, listen, Witten can still – I think there is value, even when a guy can't get great separation and yards after catch. I mean, there's a value for a guy you know he'll somehow – move the chains, we can get it to him as a safety valve. There's value there, but that's not what this is about. I think this is about stability and veteran leadership in a Dallas Cowboys locker room. Guys, where we've seen news even recently, like, put it this way. There's like a quotient, I'm sure, that they need to keep their eye on. How often is Stephen A. Smith wearing a black cowboy hat and laughing on TV? You know, if that's happening, that means bad things are happening for the Cowboys. And, the, and, and what happened? Stephen A. Smith Cowboy on a Monday fans. has a cowboy hat cracking up on TV, and by Tuesday, Jason Witten's out of the booth and playing for the Cowboys again. <laughs> These dudes need, the, the franchise needs that kind of steady hand and leadership in the locker room right now because when you survey the landscape, assuming they can still have a dominant defense, considering what the pieces that they may be losing, offensive line, check. Running back, check. Wide out, check. Receiving core, check quarterback check defense we it, like it remains to be seen but last year that's a big check what's the issue well maybe they just addressed it yeah really when you look at this transaction think big picture think about the importance of the 2019 season for everyone starting at the very top of really the football hierarchy as it pertains to the team think about jason garrett's tenure in dallas is it coming to an end Dak Prescott trying to get a new contract. Ezekiel Elliott going to be getting a new contract here soon. Then move to the coaching staff ranks again. Let me go back to that. New offensive coordinator in Kellen Moore. New quarterback coach in John Kitna. Why wouldn't you bring in a guy like Jason Witten, who essentially is going to be a de facto coach as far as helping this football team on the football field from an X and O standpoint, from a true play calling real time standpoint. And then you already spoke about both of you, Max and Stephen A. You both talked about the leadership part of it. This is really where Jason excels. The number one, the number one compliment that you could give any professional, whether it be early on in his career or late in his career, but particularly late in his career, when you know the athletic ability has started to decline, is the fact is when you call a guy a true 
pro. Clay Matthews, when I played for the Cleveland Browns, used to tell me that from day one when I walked through that building. Be a pro. You be a pro, everything else takes care of itself. That's what Jason Witten is. He's Mr. Cowboy. People will automatically respect him because he has instant credibility when he comes in there. And this, they have a young, impressionable roster that will look to him in situations of nutrition, preparation, recovery, big game performance, route running nuance, play calling nuance. He, there's not, he knows the game of football, and he knows it in real time. And he's one of those kind of guys who is best served being on the ground, playing the game. Being around well, guys, and if he and we know he may not be able to play it at the same level he did before. That's not even the point. They they realize a guy who's 35 plus isn't going to be a great tight end anymore. But see, this is what the difference is when you're talking about separating playoff teams in particular, which this this roster already is. What is the difference between being a playoff team, a well, wild card winner, and a Super Bowl winner? It's about leadership and chemistry, and Jason's going to help them with that. Well, well, Lewis, I'm going to point to a couple of things. Number one, I think in a, in a, in a fourth and one situation, I think if Jason Witten is on that team, you probably get a first down, whether it's play action and dip it to him sure. for, a, for a few yards, or you got an additional block, blocker to help Ezekiel Elliott get that one yard they needed against the Los Angeles Rams in the divisional playoff game. And I get to your point about professionalism, but I have to ask this question. When you look at the tight ends that they have, mainly Jarwin, all right, and you expect the level of production. Mm -hmm. When you look at young guys like Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott, who some were looking for it to be their team. I'm not talking about just on-field production. I'm talking about leadership in the locker room. Doesn't the potential exist? for a Jason Witten to get in the way of that, because even though he's the consummate professional, Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, the love for him, taking care of a lifelong cowboy, et cetera, et cetera. He's that guy with his relationship with upper management. But what about those relationships with players who wanted to be the leaders themselves? Yeah. How much of an impact did you anticipate yeah. that having? Yeah, that's a great question, but I think his style of leadership, Stephen A., is such that it's so selfless, it's so servant-oriented, meaning he's not coming there in there trying to say, look, I'm the big dog. You just do what I tell you to do, and all of a sudden start suffocating the growth of everyone else.